This is the iPhone 6s screen removal process. If you need help getting your phone put back together, there will be a link at the end of the video and in the video description showing the installation process. We're going to start by removing the two pentalobe screws adjacent to the lightning port connector. Go ahead and take those out. And once you do that, we're going to open up the phone, but this is going to be a little bit more difficult than the iPhone 6 because there is adhesive underneath the screen. I like to use a heat gun to warm this up because it makes it easier to work with. But if you don't have a heat gun or a blow dryer on hand, you can still open the phone. You're just going to have to work a little bit harder to do it. I do recommend that you wear safety glasses anytime you're working with broken glass or prying because there is some possibility that this glass can kind of fragment and end up in bad places. You definitely don't want that to be in your eyes. Now, if your screen's in one piece, you can use a tile suction cup to assist in opening the phone. If not, you're going to have to get something thin like an iSesimo to pry down here at the bottom. But you can see what I'm doing is kind of lifting on the screen with one hand and prying underneath it with the other. And once you get started here, you can get a pry tool inside and then just kind of work your way around the bottom and the sides of the phone. You don't need to go around the top end because that part is going to be latched in with some hooks that go underneath the frame. So you'll see that shortly. Uh, although the adhesive does go all the way around, you can't get underneath the top part at this point. Once you've got the sides loosened up pretty well, you should be able to get your finger underneath the bottom of, of the phone and just carefully lift it open. And you will see lots of residual adhesive inside here. We're going to clean that out later on and apply a new piece when we put the screen back in. So don't worry about damaging that too much, but we do want to get it all out of the phone so that we have a nice clean surface to work with. You also have to disengage the clips at the top, so the screen should kind of pull down towards the bottom of the phone. And you should have enough slack with the cables that are inside that you can prop it open this way. Do watch out for the camera because the screen likes to get hung up on that. And we want to prop this up so that we don't put any stress on the cables. Even if you're not putting the same screen back into the phone, you can usually salvage that display. Now there are two screws there you want to remove in order to get to the battery terminal cover plate. And once you remove them, you can lift this out with your hand or a pair of tweezers. It's pretty easy to get to. And after that, you want to go ahead and disconnect the battery cable. That's always the first thing that we do so that there's no power running through the phone while we work on it. You'll have four screws up here that go th into the cover plate for the display cables. Go ahead and take those out and make sure that you keep your screws organized. These are different sizes and they are not interchangeable. Once you get the four screws out, you can remove the cover plate and set that aside. And now we're going to go ahead and disconnect the display connectors. Be very careful when you pry these. If you dig in too deep, you can damage the components that are underneath. And you want to make sure you're getting underneath the metal plate and not just the foam pad that goes behind it. There are three cables in total. Once you have them all unplugged, you'll still have to kind of pull against the adhesive that's at the top end of the phone. But don't worry about that because, again, we are going to replace this when we put the new screen in. You can see here that I'm removing all of the residual adhesive. What you can't peel off, you can usually kind of just scrape with a very soft pry tool. So that same tool that we use to open the phone can be used here very carefully along the edges. Make sure you don't rub against anything on the inside of the frame. There are three screws at the top of the phone. We're going to remove all three of these in order to remove the cover plate that goes behind the speaker. You'll notice that the screw on the right hand side kind of gets stuck inside of the plate. So don't worry about that too much, but do be careful when you remove the plate. You don't want to lose that screw. So if it goes rolling around on the table, that's one thing. If it ends up on the floor, it's kind of a headache to find. There is a small adhesive loop that goes around the bottom of that metal box just below the cover plate. So you want to carefully peel this away. It's uh, fairly durable, so it shouldn't tear. But make sure you keep that intact if possible. We're going to put that back into the new screen assembly when we get to that point. Now you can kind of fold the camera over to the left-hand side. 
do be careful with these cables. There's an earpiece right below that, so you can take this speaker out. But the next steps you want to be really careful with because the adhesive here is a little bit tricky. So if you peel this over to the left hand side, you'll want to kind of maneuver these cables so that you can get to the microphone, which is that little gold box on the bottom. And in order to get this up towards the top, you have to be very careful to pry it because there is some adhesive between those two cables there. But once you fold it up, you'll see there's a very thin cable on the left side. And we want to be able to get to that so that we can pry underneath it. Again, be really careful. These things are fairly fragile. But if you take your time, you can kind of get underneath the side here and then just work your way across until you release the adhesive. And once I reposition the pry tool here, you'll see that we can kind of peel this whole thing out without tearing it and then just pull the whole piece off and set it aside. We're going to reuse that later on. There are seven screws that we need to remove to get the cover plate from behind the LCD. So what you're going to do is start here at the top and these screws come in from the side. I'm going to show a close up here so you can see and they are very small. So be careful. It's not fun to lose these and try to find them. We'll have those three along each side that we're going to take out and we'll set those all aside so we can move to the next step. Now we'll move on to the cover plate that goes behind the home button. There are going to be three screws down here at the bottom that you can remove. Now I'm going to carefully peel off the tape that goes along the side of the metal panel here on the back. It only takes an extra minute or two to get this off with a pair of tweezers and a thin pry tool. Something like a dulled razor blade works really well. Now once we have those peeled back, we can go ahead and remove the rear panel. So if you go down here at the bottom, there's a small tab that makes it easy to grab a hold of. And you can see I took off the cover plate for the home button first. And then we'll go ahead and lift this out and just kind of slide it down away from the display assembly. You will need to hold on to this for your replacement screen because they usually don't come with any of these parts that we've just removed. As far as removing the home button goes, you want to be very careful when you pry on the connector down here at the bottom. If you damage this, you will not have a fingerprint scanner no matter what, even if you replace the home button. So be very careful when you disconnect this pop connector and be especially careful when you're prying the cable away from the frame. There is some adhesive underneath there that we need to peel off and it's very difficult to get underneath and you don't wanna just pull the button out because it can be torn in the process. And again, you will not have a fingerprint scanner. Even if you replace the button, this is matched to the phone. There's one of a kind and there's no way that you can replace that yourself. So be very careful when you peel that away. And then you'll notice that it's going to be slightly more difficult to remove this home button because the adhesive is much stronger than on the previous iPhones. So I recommend that you apply some heat here if possible and take your time. The key to getting this button out without damaging the rubber boot is just to go very slowly and you'll start to notice when it comes away from the frame itself, you should be able to get it off all in one piece and you want to do that so that you can reuse the adhesive that's on there. It's not fun to try to reapply and it's not fun to replace that rubber boot. So hopefully yours is still in condition when you take it off and I lay it adhesive side up so it doesn't get stuck to anything that you're working with. The last thing on the phone that you may have to transfer is this little plastic guide for the front facing camera. If your new display already comes with that, you don't have to worry about it. Otherwise, it's not too difficult to remove. Again, I'm using some heat here. You may not find that necessary, but it's usually helpful. If you very gently pry against different areas on this little plastic piece, it starts to pull away from the glass and you should be able to get it off in one piece, hopefully. Set that aside and we'll use it for the replacement screen. 
If you found the video helpful, like it, share it, check out my channel for more tutorials and product reviews, and most of all, remember to hit the subscribe button. Feel free to leave your feedback in the comments section, and thanks for watching.